but I understand, Prime Minister, that I shall make a few opening remarks to welcome you, yes, yes, and then you take over for the main event of the evening. Oh, la, la. And after that, the oh, timing of your visit is really very really yeah. opportune. Yes. Now, we'll be joined on the platform by um, I think Mr. Hammond Tenya is not coming. Deliberately, the 
policy of healing, policy of national reconciliation, so that people who were enemies yesterday are today friends, our brothers and sisters. We have to work together to build that beautiful country of ours. During the struggle, I recall my president saying time and again that Namibia is a big country, there is room for everyone. Why do we fight one another? And that's a statement we have been making that we are now implementing in practice after having gained independence and after having scored victory in the elections. But when I was addressing the group of people in America who came to attend to observe the Democratic Party Convention, I said that Namibia is being praised by the world the most democratic country, or oh, it is a constitution, it is liberal and most democratic, that uh, freedom of press is allowed, human rights are being respected, and these are ideals of course we fought for, and we are going to see to it that they are respected. But I added by saying that people who are hungry, People who have been expecting a lot because their country's independence was going to bring a change in their lot. People who cannot read, who will not be able to internalize that beautiful constitution that is being placed. People who are unemployed and therefore have to walk around and eventually getting hungry and forced to steal cannot be expected to honor law and order. In fact, people who are hungry, who are ignorant, cannot observe democratic norms. Therefore, we are saying it is true that we have a beautiful great country. But at the moment, a country where there are maybe two Namibias, two Bentus, two Chihuahuas, everything two, two societies, where the disparities are so high, and unfortunately they are based on color lines. But it looks like that white group is privileged, and they seem to, under the policy of reconciliation, enjoy the same privileges, and that the majority of the people, the blacks, and for everybody in the world is facing those challenges, I think. The sluggishness of economy, we have to look at how to reactivate the economy to create economic activity. I always shared one thing with Mrs. Chacha. She used to say that you cannot redistribute poverty. You have to create wealth, not just distribute that. So when we talk about economic reactivation, we are trying to create wealth. And then to answer the second challenge, that of income disparity. And then services and conditions for your infrastructure. What do we do? The joke our telling is that we should make Namibia like a young lady. Namibia very attractive. I was a little scared about young people. These ladies of quality, I have to be careful. I'm just giving you the example now. And we have to make Namibia very attractive like a young lady who is looking for, now these days we are looking for marriage. So, but I'm using the old time example. And we are looking at a young lady who is having so many suitors. And she has to be so attractive that she can pick up one of the suitors and they can, we can marry her. So similarly, why should you go to Namibia if you can go to Asia? And then we said, well, what are these businessmen looking for? What is their problem? Why they not come to Namibia? We said, well, 
Cambridge Institute are looking for security. They want peace. They want their investments to be safe. And they would like to have freedom to repatriate their profits. They also want easy access to the country. They want immigration policies and customs to be arranged in such a way that a businessman who is busy, after having traveled 10 hours from London to Bentley, cannot stay one hour at the airport as tired as he is. As some of the bureaucrats are pushing papers, useless papers. Now we said, what do we do then to guarantee this? We had to enact act of parliament to try to answer this fears. One, the first item of peace, democracy, and now anything else is multi-partisan war. They have three political freedom to do that. In other words, democracy. But those ones were answered by our free and fair elections, by having our seven parties in the parliament. We take this uh, Pretorius, is a member of parliament. We all represent different parties, but we are in one parliament, there's Namibians going undertaking this trip to talk to you about Namibia. So that has been our example by having a democratic multi-party system. It is so far working because our parliamentary debates are very lively, are uh, better organized, and better than freedom to expatriate the progress. And that is also guaranteed in the deal we pass in the parliament. And then in the case of dispute, why do we trust and our courts are the deal he said, what is wrong with this report? Then we are told that they are, you are still worried about some more incentives. Incentives must be granted. He said, what, what more do they want? We have done enough, but still more incentives, my goodness. Where do we get them from? By giving additional tax kind of holidays, like the tax holidays for a number of years, and a substantially reduced standard corporate tax rate thereafter, a reduction of withholding tax on dividends paid, exemption from general tax on imported capital. Yes, taxation of dividends to the effect that dividends declared to individuals in Namibia will in future gain for our constitution is one of the modern constitutions talking about environment protection. So if the company is also environment friendly, we must also reward them to encourage them. Then the other problem, some of the businessmen are worried about is the market. This country being very small, population of 1.4 people. No but I think this aspect must be viewed in a total South African region context, so to say. We are talking about close to 40 million people. And we are talking about countries like Angola, we have South Africa very soon to form the regional economic needs. So there is a market. And besides that, labor, reasonable in Namibia, not quite skilled, of course. That's why we are trying to give incentives in training. Then you get incentives up in there, some kind of reward for training. But it will be reliable workforce. And therefore, it will also be used as kind of a transit country. It will be used as a country for export. Therefore, we are proposing export processing, export processing zone. <coughs> that anything, as I said already, that you manufacture for export will be tax free and duty free. The political
Digital and Constitutional Developments in Namibia since 89 have been described, as I already said, as model for the region and further afield. I would like to add that Namibia will leave no stone unturned in order to achieve economic development and growth which can serve as a model as well. But we, the manufacturing sector is only about 4.4%. And that is a sector which can provide more employment. So definitely that's one area in which we can invite investors with the hope of at least adding value to our products. We are in our country. We also were advised not to tell an investor where he must come and put his money. He must have complete freedom. We are aware of that too. I'm just giving you this address. system so that we can deal with drought in the future. Set up the permanent kind of machinery. So we are addressing that issue and hopefully can cope with it and survive it. Thank you. Uh, there are tickets on the aircraft flights. We do have representatives here of British Airways who will take your orders. Thank you very much. Sir. <laughs> I'm sorry about the mention of British Airways, but... Uh, <laughs> we have competition. They are going to come to... Uh, uh, Sir Frank Kennedy is here from British Airways. I was trying to find him. Ja, ik heb een 